great to see you beautiful out here in the garden. It's actually chilly today because the wind is coming from the South Pole. Now it's only just past the end of summer officially and we're into autumn but you know by contrast it's cold. Um, so hence I'm wearing my crown. So let me show you the day. There it is. And there is the weather, as you can see, blowing across from left of the screen to the right of the screen. The pole is to the south on the left. Um, and of course, we have flowers. Got to enjoy these while they're here. I'm going to walk straight up the bank and into the garden. So we can get close to these fabulous white nerines. Wendy, good morning. Look at them, aren't they glorious? There's even more of them in the front garden, but today we're in the back. Victor, good morning. <laughs> You're going to get really familiar with these. I know you saw them yesterday too. So here we are in the back garden enjoying the nerines. It's just so abundant. Just beautiful. Getting a little bit closer. And you can see the pink ones in the background. Morning, Nesreen. Morning, Julian. Aren't they glorious? I just love these flowers. They smell good too. You're just going to have to, um, you know, turn on your own smell of vision and decide how sweet they smell. But let me tell you, they smell sweet. Let's have a look at the rather slightly moth-eaten pink ones. They're still beautiful, even though they get chewed. It's kind of part of the look. Hi, Sonchia. Good morning. Um, what else have we got going on here? I mean, this really is the highlight. At the moment, the, or, the, they're called nerines, um, or if you're politically incorrect, you can call them naked ladies. That's what I always knew they were when I was small. Cynthia, good morning! Um, and those ones over there are getting a bit old, but they're still lovely. And we've got purple campanula that just always comes up under the lemon tree, so there's always something going on. Good morning, Amy! Um, look at this! Actually, you know, the clover. Clover's beautiful and there's the odd flower. I mean, it has been mowed in the last little while. Enjoy the replay, Sonchia. You're probably on your way to work. But, I mean, this is so lush. Um, so I just enjoy this. What else have we got here? Take a quick walk up the back. Actually, we'll go past the rose because it's doing the unseasonal second flowering. Rambler roses only usually flower once, but this year it's really doing a second go, which is lovely. Waving around in the wind. And there you go, I'll stand back so you can see. It's just a spattering. Bet it, good morning. Um, and this is what I wanted to show you. Because we take these things for granted in New Zealand because they're so common. Native, it's called a hebe native tongue and um, it has these beautiful white flowers and there's many different sorts of kamahi and they don't all get called kamahi either but it's just a really varied species the english name or the latin name is hebe so there you go right so today yes it's, a, it's, it's quite a topic this one today of saying no and how on earth you take the first bite of that apple or that biscuit when the very idea, the very thought of saying no is frankly terrifying. Hi Tracy, great to see you. Good morning all of you, it's so lovely to have you here with me. So, because I was thinking about this again, because of something dear Charlotte said, um, and so, you know, thank you Charlotte for giving me a wonderful topic. You know, it's like, this is a great idea, I want to say no. I, I can imagine the other person responding to me differently I can actually change my expectation but the idea of saying no just you know ah! and again I relate to this from my own experience so there I was thinking about this and thinking well what would I do how would I start to tackle this if the whole concept was just really really scary and for some people it is really really scary and for me at times it has been really really scary so I just want to acknowledge that okay you know some people grow up being able to say oh piss off leave me alone it's innate it's normal it's natural it's easy and for some of us it's just not like that Tanuya it is great to see you honey um good morning good morning to everybody who's loving and liking it's awesome to see you um so yeah, so where do you start? And I thought, well, if you're really scared, morning Sharon! If you're really scared, right? 
I suppose the quote unquote natural and normal response is to think I've got to push through this, I've got to fight my way through this, I've got to force myself not to feel scared, I've got to force myself to say no, I've got to be brave, I've got to have courage. And yeah, okay, but I, I want to talk about another way to do this today. There's a place for um, kind of I can't think of the right word now. It's not bumming your way through. There's a case for kind of, you know, bullying your way through is what I was after. Change the M to an L, Maddie, and you've got it. There's a place for bullying your way through things, but I don't think this is one of them. If you're really scared and you say, I'm going to push through this, I'm going to force through this, I'm going to make it happen, even though I'm terrified. Trey, good morning. Lovely to see you. Um, then you're still in fear. You're still in fear and your whole body is sort of awash with those stress hormones and anything you do and say and think is going to be from that place of feeling like the animal that's being chased by the tiger is not very rational. You're not likely to make choices and take behaviours and feel things and think things that you actually like. So my suggestion is don't bull through these things. Don't force yourself because you've been forced enough. You've been forced or coerced or manipulated or you've given in. Okay, it's all happening inside you. I'm using I'm using what you relate to. And because when we're small particularly, we often don't have a choice, right? But by the time we've grown up, it's become a habit that we collapse, that we give in, that we feel powerless, that we feel the guilt trip and we just say, okay, fine. But you've been coerced enough. So don't try to coerce yourself. If you're wanting to say no, remember that your no is your yes. So why would you want to start creating your yes out of more forcing and more coercion and more pressure and more you must? It doesn't make sense and it's not conducive to you actually being congruent and coherent and okay with saying yes. Right, it'll just be more known as, it'll just be more forcing yourself to do and be something that you're not really. You don't want your mind, which is your thinking and your choosing and all of that, and your body, which is how you feel, to continue to be fighting each other. It just doesn't work. So my suggestion is that the first thing you got to do is take all the pressure off yourself to feel better, feel different, know what to do and how to do it, and all of that, because... You don't. You never did. You got programmed with something else. And here you are, at whatever age you are and however long it's been that you've been like this, thinking, well, shit, I don't know how to be any different. Elizabeth, that's gorgeous to see you, honey. So, you know, the first thing is to back off and give yourself some space and be kind to yourself, oh, which is not habitual or normal or natural or even easy when you're used to being coerced into stuff right Heather good morning <laughs> this isn't that easy <laughs> you're not used to it you're not familiar with it so to back off <laughs> to remove the pressure that's really important And to realize that just by being kind to yourself, by stopping forcing yourself, by saying, okay, we're going to do this gently and I'm not going to say yes to anything until I really feel that yes. And shit, I don't know what that feels like either. So I'm still here feeling most familiar with saying yes to things I don't want, right? But at least you understand that and at least you are honoring yourself in that state of being that you're used to at least you are no longer coercing yourself to try and be something else that you don't know how to be so it's really important to take that pressure away because until you back off of yourself it's like this is important to somebody because I'm not allowed to move on to what you would do next yet until you back off of yourself until you genuinely give yourself the space to really love and respect yourself and say, okay, I only know how to say yes to things when it's actually a no. 
Whew, I'm so used to being coerced and pushed and pressured and manipulated and guilted and everything else. I just, the idea of anything else is terrifying to me because it's so unknown. I don't know how to do it. Hmm, okay. Oh, I bet I love myself right here. Whatever that means. Don't really know. Has a chip. Oh, yes. Oh, my God, Victor. I so felt like that. It's like, oh, there's, there's just these things you do. You go to work, you do these hours, you get paid a pittance, and that just what that's just what work is. That was a program that I run for a long time because I didn't even know that work was supposed to be something you enjoyed. Oh, my God. So, yes, you know, life is a grind. Linda, good morning, honey. Um, so, you know, and we actually, first of all, have to realise what we've been saying yes to, realise that it's a no, and be okay with that and not push ourselves into suddenly, oh, I know how to say yes to myself and no to everything else. It's a big, big change to make. It really is. So, okay, I think I've made enough of a point about that. You just have to accept yourself and love yourself as not knowing how. It's okay. Most of the world doesn't know how, by the way. Just think about the societal and religious and family programming that most of us get about duty and obligation and what a good person does and what a bad person does and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Most people don't know how to say no, okay? Be kind to yourself. Heck, it's not as simple as it seems. Okay, right, so... Having given ourselves permission to not have a fecking idea how this works. Well, then the next thing is to get a fecking idea, right? And to do that... Later! It's great to see you, honey! To do that, you've got to get outside of your own box somehow. And what that means, when I think about it from this kind of perspective, is okay... This is, this is the kind of thinking I'd be trying, I'd be playing with. All right, I really don't know this. I really don't know. But if, if somehow I became a person who did know how, right, and we're not going to worry about how that happens because I haven't got a clue, um, if I could love myself as I am without everything that's been imposed upon me by someone, everybody else, you know, if I could, you know, if all of that stuff that I can tell you the story about that I understand is the reason why I am the way I am and scared to do things and blah, 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 blah. Tish, good morning. If all of that was uh, uh, not even happened, if it was in a different universe, I mean, I often say this, you know, if, if I was just in another life, how would that life be? You know, if there was a movie of your life that was the way you wanted. Hi, Nikki. Great to see you. What would it be? What would be in that movie? What would you see yourself doing? What kinds of expressions would you see on your face? You know, what? just imagine it like that. Put it on a movie screen. This is neuro-linguistic programming a little bit, by the way. Stick it out there so you don't have to really agree with it or know how it feels. Really. Just look at it and think, okay, how would I life, like my life to be? And everybody who's ever made a big change in their life has done this. Because you can't create something new until you've actually imagined it and thought, I'd like that. What would my life be like if it was like this? How would this be? But often because we have all seen a movie and we've all seen somebody, oh God, I wish I was like them. I wish I had that. I wish I, you know, all the things that you say, I wish, right? I wish I could have that much money. I wish I could be healthy. I wish I could have a lover or a companion or a home to live in. Whatever. I wish, I wish, I wish, right? Make a movie in your mind of what you wish. Just look at it, okay? And the thing that's going to happen when you start looking at it is, first of all, all you're going to feel is, oh, my God, that's fucking impossible. Don't even... Oh God, I wish Maddie hadn't told me to start wishing because now I just feel how bloody impossible it all is, right? You've got to be prepared for that resistance and that impossibility and that knowness and that this is not ever, ever in a million years going to happen for me to come up. It's going to. Don't be put off. That's where I fell over for so many years. I did not understand this. The fact that it seemed utterly impossible and stupid and... And, you know, all of that stuff, 
stop me dead because I didn't understand that what I desire is on the other side of that impossibility and it's only impossible because I think that thought and it feels so true in my body I know this I feel this in my guts my life is like this and it's impossible for it to change and we believe this because it feels so true and it is it is because we believe it and we feel it and and you know we're being this and the universe must endorse who we're being so it continues to be like that but this is the thing I didn't understand you have to start with okay yeah sure I'm like this but if this is what I wish if this is what I desire and I start to just look at it and I'm using look on purpose your resistance is going to come up your fears, your impossibilities, your this can't happen, you're useless, you'll never change, and all of that bullshit, it's going to come up. Don't be put off by it. So, oh, wow, you found the moment. Amazing. So now you can do a movie where you turned right instead of left. And you're totally walking into it, Linda. You know that. That's the thing. The insight comes always as we go along. So, you start to look at this this movie of impossibilities, and I've got to show you something while it's still there. Look at that. It's just peeping through the clouds. Beautiful. So you start looking at the impossible things that you just imagine that just show up through all the drifting mist and the impossibilities and the can't happens, and oh my God, I know what this feels like, right? And you understand that all of the, this can't happen that comes up in you is not true. It's going to feel true. It's not true. And then my next step would be to choose just one small part of that movie and look at it a little bit closer. Just one small part. And not the biggest bit either. One of the small, you know, unassuming little bits that doesn't seem quite so impossible as the rest of them. Seeing Marie, it's gorgeous to see you, honey. Just choose one piece. And begin to play with it. You know, when you're waking up in the morning and you're half awake and half asleep and you bring that thought, or just that little piece of that movie to mind, and you start to play with it. Now, why would I suggest you do it first thing in the morning when you're lying in bed and you're not quite ready to wake up? Because at that time, your brain is coming from theta, which is between sleeping and awaking, you gone. You're in Delta. You're asleep. When you wake up first, you're in theta. You are in the subconscious mind at that time. The door to your subconscious mind is open. So when you start playing and imagining, there's less resistance. And you, you know, you picture and you imagine. And if you just do that in the morning and in the evening, if you remember, because when you go back to sleep, you go from beta brain waves, which is what you're in right now, listening to me talking. I'm a beta too. Alpha is when you're relaxed and your internal world becomes more real than your external world. Theta, you're dreaming. You're in between. You're in la la land. You're in. You're in the subconscious. You're in magic land, is what Joe calls it. Um, and there you can create. And if you just do that, if you just pick that one little scene from the movie of your I Wish Life, and first thing in the morning, and you'll have to practice this, you'll have to train yourself. Think, oh, let me just imagine this. Let me just imagine how that would be. And maybe it's just one scene where you're walking on a beach, and there's nobody there, and you're feeling free. And you see the smile on your face and the sunshine and you smell the salt and you hear the sound of the, you know. And you start to fill in these details just quite naturally, particularly when you're in theta and alpha. See, this is why I'm saying first thing in the morning, last thing at night, as you go to sleep, you're programming yourself. It is actually self-hypnosis, really. But just do it very gently and easily. Just imagine. Sooner or later, and probably sooner than you think, you're going to put yourself on the beach, you're going to think about it, you're just going to imagine, and say, oh, okay, I'm going through this process, it's rote, it's bloody intellectual, and you know, blah, 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 blah. and then you're going to start really feeling like you're there. You're going to start noticing, oh, this is really nice. I'm feeling good. I said yes to this. And you will start to connect with the feelings. You will. You have to. Because every time you imagine it, you fire and wire that, that new experience in your brain. And every time you go back to it, it's a little bit more established. This is literally how you do it. So, you know, that's your I Wish movie and I've chosen something that's easy and peaceful and nice. But what if there's a scene in your I Wish movie where you are 
tastefully and powerfully and collectively and centeredly and coherently able to say no to somebody that you've always said yes to and there is no fear in your body none at all you feel immense peace and calm but if you start playing with that you know well, I mean practice don't do that the first time play with the beach I'm using examples but I know you know what I mean you got to practice this and as you start to create, this is not just idle imagination. You are creating new neural nets. And you can do the beach before you ever go there. And you can do the saying no before you ever go there. And, but you have to do it from this place of being soft and relaxed and open. And the minute it starts to feel scary, you got a choice. You can either... See if you can pull yourself back into the soft and open and I'm, I'm peace, I'm okay thing. Or you can just let it go. Let it go. Give it up to the a higher mind, to God, the divine observer, source, whoever it is, whatever it is. Give it up. Let it go. It's okay, all right, I've worked with that enough today. You look after it. Bring it to me in, a, in the perfect way. And, and you can just let it go. With practice, it gets easier. We have this is how you create the new self. I mean, I do it in very deep states of meditation now, and it's a lot easier there. But if you don't want to do that, or if you're not ready to do that, that's fine. You can do it first thing at night, first thing in the morning, last thing at night. It's the same window of opportunity. It's just a little bit narrower, and you don't get to control it because you're naturally going to wake up. And that's okay, and you're naturally going to go to sleep, and that's okay too. So, you know, that's my very practical, this is what I would do. Yeah, trust, absolutely. And trust, by the way, is something I have had to practice and learn. Because for me, for a long time, the world really wasn't a safe place. It's only recently, really, because it, it went so deep that I started to feel really, really safe. And it's all because I'm really, really connecting with the divine now divine source unified field whatever words you want to use and it's so deep in me that this you know the sense of oh, hyper vigilance is one of the things that's gone recently and i'm so grateful i'm so grateful for the change susanna it's lovely to see you just ready to finish this is great i get to greet you live our time is up today fabulous to share this with you i look forward to seeing your comments and replying because i can't do it all now no it doesn't mean you're not listening it just means that you haven't quite done it often enough tracy we'll talk about that tomorrow thank you fabulous awesome tomorrow's set we know what we're doing big love bye bye